Now let us actually get into details about setting up an agent to get data from web server logs into HDFS using Flume. When we get data from web server logs into HDFS using any technology, we need to consolidate multiple messages before writing into files, especially with respect to streaming uh, data ingestion tools. We need to take care of this, otherwise you will run into too many small files issue. And Flume actually provides that flexibility for us to control uh, 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 how to consolidate multiple messages before writing into files in HDFS. And we will actually talk about that when we actually get into the details about adding respective properties for sync to write data into HDFS. Let us start with source. We will actually create a uh, configuration file and first we will actually update the source and we will actually use uh, the simple flume agent which we have developed earlier as baseline and we will make changes and after each and every step uh, such as defining the source, defining the channel and defining the sync, we will actually validate to make sure that each of these uh, changes are working as expected. That being said, even before uh, getting into uh, defining the properties in uh, configuration file for flume agent, we need to determine the appropriate source type to read data from our web server logs. Here the fundamental question is whether you are uh, trying to read the log files or data from the log files using flume agent deployed locally on that server where the log files are being generated or you want to deploy flume agent on a remote server and want to read the messages from the log files uh, over TCP. So this is a very very important question that needs to be answered and based on that there are different types of so, uh, sources which can be categorized and you have you can determine the source type from the respective category. For example if you go to the uh, Flume documentation you can actually see all the sources like Avro, Thrift, Texec, Spooling Directory, Tail Directory so on and so forth. So if you have to read data from remote servers where the Flume agent is deployed uh, than where the logs are being generated, you need to use sources such as syslog sources. So, uh, syslog sources is very special uh, compared to others. Uh, so these days modern applications are uh, being deployed on containers and containers are supposed to be ephemeral or stateless, which means the log files are typically flushed out of the container to an external uh, uh, environment and one of the approach is to use syslog. So if you have a container based uh, web application, then you have to choose uh, the syslog sources. I haven't explored them at in detail, but that is the purpose of syslog, which is very, very important to understand. And then you can use other uh, sources also, which can uh, actually read data over TCP, not netcat. Netcat is for experimental purposes. Uh, I don't know whether it, is, it can be used in actual production implementations or not. You can also use thrift source, I guess. There are uh, all these sources which can read data over TCP. You just have to evaluate them and determine which source you should use if you have to read data uh, using a Flume agent that is deployed remotely than wherever the logs are being generated. Now comes uh, the scenario where the agent will be deployed on uh, the same server where the logs are being generated. In that scenario, either you can use exec or spooling directory or tail directory. These are the three different sources which you can use. Uh, I will be evaluating uh, between uh, exec and spooling directory and we will be demonstrating using exec. But you can choose one of these things and you can determine whatever is relevant for your purpose and you can take it from there. When it comes to exec, all it takes is type as exec and command or shell script which will uh, actually get you the data in streaming fashion. However, there are some caveats with exec. Exec is an asynchronous process and it will keep on running this tail hyphen f command into the log file which you have passed as part of tail hyphen f and it will get bunch of messages. Whether it write into channel or not, it will go to the next, uh, uh, next tail hyphen f output and it will keep on trying to push those messages into channel. The Side effect of this is data loss. So you can uh, run into data loss issues if you use exec as source. You might be able to use type as file, uh, channel type as file, 
సో దట్ యూ డోంట్ రన్ ఇన్ టు దీస్ ఛానల్ రిలేటెడ్ కంటెన్షన్ ఇష్యూస్ వేర్ ద ఇష్యూ కెన్ బి మిటిగేటెడ్ అప్ టు అన్ ఎక్స్టెంట్ బట్ స్టిల్ దెర్ ఇస్ ఏ గుడ్ ప్రాబిలిటీ దట్ యూ మైట్ అండ్ అప్ ఇన్ టు డేటా లాస్ ఇష్యూస్ విత్ ఎక్సెక్ దట్ బీంగ్ సెడ్ ఎక్సెక్ షుడ్ నాట్ బీ యూస్డ్ ఇన్ ప్రొడక్షన్ సినారియోస్ వేర్ డేటా లాస్ ఈజ్ నాట్ ఏ కన్సిడరేషన్ ఇఫ్ డేటా హ్యాస్ టు బీ కాపీడ్ దెన్ ఎక్సెక్ షుడ్ నాట్ బీ యూస్డ్ వాట్ ఆర్ ది ఆల్టర్నేటివ్స్ ద వన్ ఆఫ్ ది ఆల్టర్నేటివ్ ఈజ్ స్పూలింగ్ డైరెక్టరీ you can see here and it has a type as spool div or spool directory and then you have to specify the path where you want to read these files from from spool directory so the way it will work is let me show you an example here i am connecting to my lab and i am going to one of the standard location where logs will be generated which is nothing but var log and we have something called ambari uh, agent running on this server and hence if i go to ambari agent directory and if you look at the logs there are bunch of log files which have ambari agent as the name and the extension as log and then there are some log files which have suffixes so here these log files are immutable and static they will not be updated this is the one which is being updated in real time as and when someone logs in to ambari or someone use ambari on this machine okay so this is the live log file and these are cold log files or static log files so as uh, the way you should uh, use pooling directory is whatever directory you specified as pool dir once the file is rotated into a static file like this depending upon certain thresholds that file should be copied into that pool directory and what flume will do is it will process that file so in this case instead of running tail hyphen f command on a file it will just process the entire file and once it is processed it will append completed and it will move uh, or rename the file as completed so using this approach you should be able to reprocess the data when uh, uh, if you if you feel you miss some data and also uh, flume will have better control on these files uh, because these are static and hence it will actually Uh, take care of uh, uh, data uh, loss issues you you will not uh, either you will not be losing the data or even if you lose the data you should be able to uh, reconcile uh, as you uh, as you have the files that are marked as completed here okay so that's where spool directory comes into picture but one disadvantage of spool directory is if you look at into these log files this log file is uh, started on september 19th 710 and it is 1040 now and still it is being populated if i have uh, thresholds such as 1 mb or 24 hours until the file is populated with 1 mb or 24 hours the log files will not be rotated so if you are familiar with log4j or any other logging framework there is a mechanism where we can actually roll our log files into uh, static files like this so that a, a given log file will not uh, grow over a period of time Uh, and uh, and and make our life uh, uh, or make its li- uh, life unmanageable and hence we typically rotate these files if the log rotation happens every 24 hours that means you are not actually streaming data in real time so you have to understand this uh, limitation and you have to work around with the source team by reducing the log rotation time to a manageable uh, 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 duration depending upon your requirement and you have to spool the files uh, into this directory once uh, they are rotated and then uh, flume will pick up those files and process and they will re- uh, be renamed as completed files okay so that being said uh, th- those are the pros and cons between exec and spooling directory uh, most likely you have to use spooling directory for your production scenarios where data loss is not uh, acceptable and then you have to negotiate with the source team to uh rotate the log files as frequently as you want and you have to take it from there that being said for our example we will be defining uh exec source and we'll try to read the data from uh, local uh, log files and then we'll actually get into the other details about setting up sync uh, channel etc 
and we will validate all those things. So here I am connecting to the lab. If you are not familiar with the lab, you can actually go to labs.itvarsity.com and if you need a multi-node cluster to explore these technologies, you can sign up by going to products and then uh, you will get access uh, once you sign up uh, to this page and using this information, username, password and host name, you should be able to connect to the host and that's how I, I, I have connected here. And then if you are following the course from the beginning, uh, earlier I have created this directory called Flume Demo and then a simple example that is our first Flume agent uh, which is developed. Using that, we will start uh, uh, improvising on it to read data from log files and then eventually to write into HDFS. So here I am actually saying mkdr or cp-rf, simple example to multi-sync. The reason why I am using multi-sync is eventually I want to write data both to HDFS as well as Kafka. That's why I am re re uh, copying it to a uh, directory name multi-sync just to represent that. Now if I go to multi-sync. I want to rename this file example.conf to logs to multi.conf. So because we want to write both to HDFS as well as Kafka, I am giving the configuration file name as logs to multi. Okay. I renamed it and then I am opening this file and I am replacing the agent name from A12 LM, which means log log to multi. Okay, percentage S and hit enter. Now the agent name is LM and as of now source type is netcat and we want to use the exec. So I'm replacing the source type to exec here. I'm not changing anything uh, uh, yet here. The names of uh, sources, things and channels. We will do that at a later point in time. For now, we, not, we are not going to change anything. Okay. And if it is exec type, the only mandatory property is command. And as part of the command, we can say tail hyphen f opt gen underscore logs. You have to be uh, accurate with the if a file location. It should be correct, uh, correct path and also you should have permissions on top of it. Uh, logs and access dot log. We will copy this and then we will actually run this to make sure that we are getting the log messages and we are using the right path. So now our configuration file is updated to read data from web server logs instead of netcat as we have seen earlier. Now if I run this with agent name as lm, whatever messages that are being uh, written to the log file should be displayed on the logger because the sync is type logger, we will see that into uh, on uh, on agents uh, uh, log messages as part of agents log messages. So let me save it and come out of it and let me run this command flume ng agent hyphen hyphen name lm, our agent name is lm and then configuration file is logs to multi dot cons and hit enter. Now the agent is being started and it will issue the tail hyphen f command at frequent intervals and it, you should see the output on the screen. You can see here, we are seeing the output here. So now we are able to read the data from uh, web server logs and able to print on the screen. We have to change this sync to HDFS and we will understand all the important properties related to HDFS and we will take it from there.